So I am super excited to be starting a brand new series on this channel. This is a beginner to master speed run, as you can see above my head. Uh, I'll be starting at a 400 ELO on chess.com and trying to work my way up until master level or above, hopefully 2200 plus. And I'm not sure how many games it will take, but this won't be the traditional speed run where I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible. But the goal with the series is to be as educational as possible and to show what it takes to beat different players at different rating levels, how to punish beginner mistakes, intermediate mistakes, and really show the core chess fundamentals that you need to know to level up your own game and take your rating to the next level. So with all that said, I'm super excited to hop in. Now, as you maybe can see, my rating on chess.com is still 1202. As maybe you watched my recent video, you'll know that I had to play a bunch of games on this account to get an established rating. And I emailed chess.com admins and I'm waiting for them to reset the rating back to 400. That way it will be less volatile. Um, so as I wait, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp. So if you're a human like me and not a robot, then chances are that you face some challenging times in your life. Is something interfering with your happiness? Are you having trouble achieving your goals? Regardless of whether you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or you're just going through a hard time and want someone to talk to, therapy can really help you take a different approach to your life. And that's why I'm super excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Their mission is to make therapy more affordable and accessible regardless of where you live. They're an online platform that makes finding a therapist as easy as beating Martin Bot. I'm sorry, Martin, you're a robot. Therapy is not for you. But again, if you're human, all you need to do is fill out a few questions and BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. If you want to try it out, click the link in the video description, betterhelp.com slash Eric Rosen to get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. Again, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video and making therapy accessible to more people all over the world. And now let's get back to the chess. All right, so I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know why. It feels like I'm starting chess for the first time. But my rating has been reset to 400. And I'm just going to hop in, start a 10-minute game. And first opponent playing K Mindiwini. Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, opponent took a little bit of time on the first move, but plays D4. And I'm going to stick with uh, very simple and just classical openings for the most part. Um, not going to do anything too tricky or trappy in the opening. We see knight c3, which uh, at a higher level usually signifies that white wants to go for Jobava London. Um, at beginner level, this move isn't super recommended because generally in d pawn openings, the C pawn likes to come to C4 or C3, and knight coming in front of the C pawn um, doesn't harmonize in the best way. But of course, it's still very playable. Uh, we see knight to F3. And in this position, it's really a question how to develop the minor pieces. And in these first several games, um, I'm going to try not to play like mainline opening theory, but try and play in a very easy to understand manner. And generally, like in the opening, you want to castle as quickly as possible, like get out this uh, kingside bishop and, uh, and castle. Uh, but the problem with playing e6 is it will block in this bishop on c8. So I'm going to play the move here, bishop to f5. And simple plan is to play e6 and then bring out the bishop and then castle. And I'm actually playing a reverse London system. Uh, now, opponent gives me a check. Um, there's a few ways to avoid the check. I'm going to play c6. This is a very common, I would say, beginner inaccuracy, this bishop b5 check, because usually it doesn't help white in any way. And especially when the pawn can block, then this bishop is going to have to move again. But I will say my opponent hasn't really done any, like, serious blunders yet, just playing a few small inaccuracies like this knight c3 and bishop b5. And now I have a decision to make. Uh, bishop d3, challenging my bishop on f5. 
And there are a few options here. I could leave the bishop on f5, but if I allow white to take, I take back and have double pawns and probably don't want to, to enter those sort of lines. Um, I think the move I'll play is bishop g6. And this is a very common approach in such situations where I'm leaving the tension. I'm basically offering, if white wants to trade, then I'll be happy to take back with the h-pawn. And this would be a good example of double pawns where the rook would then have the open h-file. The h-pawn would be a, a square closer to the center, which is always nice. And one thing I, I learned um, a bit later in my chess career, it's kind of obvious when you think about it, but with pawns on the A and H files, they're basically half as powerful as pawns on the G through B files because they only control one square. But when I move towards the center, now the pawn controls two squares. And I do have double pawns, but they're not at all weak. And uh, okay, my opponent is very much following opening principles, really hasn't done anything clearly wrong yet. Um, but I have a very solid position. And as I mentioned earlier, my plan was to castle as quickly as possible. But because the h file is now open, I want to keep my rook on h8 and use it as hopefully an attacking weapon. And I'm going to start here with bishop to d6. And already we can see some harmonization between the rook and the bishop. Uh, my plan is very likely to play a move like queen c7, maybe knight g4. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see a, a nice example of how to orchestrate an attack from the early middle game. But I will say, I'm impressed with my opponent's play so far, given the rating. I, I was expecting to maybe be completely winning by move 10, but that's not going to be the case. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to show no mercy here. Opponent plays queen e1, which it is a, a slightly awkward move. Um, kind of signifies that white maybe doesn't know what to do. Although this move does perhaps support the idea of playing e4. And yeah, I have to be careful because if I allow e4 and e5, then these pieces can be exploited. So there's a move here I really like. I'm just going to play it is knight e4. And while this doesn't directly attack the h-pawn, I'm opening up the line for the queen. And I'm also creating a situation where if white takes the knight, I'll take back and I'll, okay, we're going to see this play out. I'm basically removing a key defender of the h2 pawn. And now white is in big, big trouble because if the knight moves here, Okay, knight moves here, which uh, is a free piece. Um, after the game, I'll, I'll analyze a few of the different options. Uh, I could take the knight or I could take on h2 first. I think I'd rather take on h2 first. So why not take a pawn with check, force a king to h1, and then, yeah, eventually I'll take the knight. I think white is now realizing their predicament. Yeah, this did escalate pretty quickly. Um, I guess I, I didn't get a winning position by move, or did I? Yeah, I did I did get a winning position by move 10. Um, but it goes to show the danger that white, white was facing from early on with this open h file. After the game, I'll, I'll share what white could have done better. Uh, yeah, so here I'll take the knight. And it's still a question of how to checkmate, but it's very nice having a lot of firepower on the king side to take the pawn, unleashing the rook. White has only two legal moves here, uh, both of which will, will face checkmate. Um, really, any bishop move on my next move will be checkmate. Uh, to be stylish, I'll play bishop c7. And that's uh, discover checkmate with the queen. So pretty quick game, um, but I, I think this is actually a very instructive game. And yeah, I was debating 
before playing this first game, if I'll record multiple games for this one video, and I think I'll, I'll probably play one more game after this one at least uh, to make the video at least a little bit longer. But let me show uh, what White should have done. Um, probably already in this position, White should have sensed some danger. And a simple approach here would be to play a move like H3 or G3. H3 essentially undermines a rook and no longer allows me to be pressuring a pawn in h2. g3 would undermine the bishop. And these would be relatively like safer defensive moves. Um, of course, earlier too, there were probably uh, some better options for white. Um, yeah, generally this, this move pawn e3 uh, is not desirable when you have the bishop still on, on c1. So a move like bishop f4 or bishop g5 would have been a little bit better. Um, but going back to really the key moment here when I played knight e4, white had to be super, super careful. And um, yeah, I think taking was a game losing blunder. Although I'm realizing here, white could have played knight e5, which would have saved the knight and blocked my attack uh, against h pawn. Um, but things would still be looking very good here. A move like f6 attacking the knight. Knight's essentially pinned at h-pawn. I think this would lead to a very, very pleasant position for black. Um, I also want to show move I was expecting was knight d2. Uh, this would walk into bishop takes h2. And here there's actually a cool mating idea. Bishop g3, king g1, and then I can sacrifice a rook. And after the king takes, the queen can come in with check. And after king g1, queen h2 mates. This is a a really nice and uh, pretty common mating sequence with the open h file against the castled king. So I hope there's some lessons to take away from that one. Uh, good game to my opponent. I think played a fine opening, just um, got a little bit uh, careless with, uh, with the kingside play. Okay, so that was the first game. Uh, I gained 26 rating points. So I think my rating is still a little bit volatile, but um, maybe it's a good thing to kind of speed through these lower rating levels. And I'll do one more. Playing Strange Deja Vu. I don't think I've played this opponent before. Lots of some Deja Vu I've been forgetting. But playing E4. And um, I'm going to stick with a uh, classical opening repertoire. We see the Scandinavian which is definitely very common, uh, especially at lower levels. And uh, generally against this opening, the best move is just to take. And uh, most people take back with queen. We'll see what my opponent wants to do here. Knight f6. So this is, uh, I guess, what we call the modern Scandinavian defense. Um, it's an opening I sometimes like to play from the black side. Black is staying flexible, uh, offering to give me a chance to defend the pawn if I want. And there are a bunch of moves here. Probably the most common move is d4, allowing black to take the pawn. But there's also c4, there's bishop b5 check. Um, I'm debating like what the easiest path is to development. I don't want to like be materialistic and try and save the pawn. Like after c4, there's weird gambits with e6. Not sure if my opponent will be aware of uh, the tricky gambits, but I'm going to play in a very uh, patient and solid style. Uh, knight f3. Giving black the chance to take the pawn with the queen or the knight. But my plan is basically to develop my minor pieces as quickly as possible. And I'll start here with knight c3 attacking the queen. This is what we call developing with tempo. Uh, I, I bring out a minor piece and black has to waste time moving the queen again. And black actually chose one of the worst squares for the queen. So now the queen is aligned with the king. And this is a very, uh, very classic tactic. Bishop b5 pinning the queen. And uh, yeah, oh no, oh no, your queen. Uh, a slight opening tragedy for my opponent, but a very important lesson. Um, and generally, in the lower levels, you should be very, very cautious when bringing out your queen early. Of course, there's many exceptions to the rules. Like even, even this position is is very playable. Uh, the best move 
one of the best moves was queen a5 or, or queen d6. But um, yeah, this is maximum punishment. We'll take the queen. And we're going to see my opponent uh, try and fight on. And generally, when you win material early in the game, there's a few things to keep in mind. Okay, knight d4, very, very aggressive move. If I take, I lose my queen back. Black wants to double my pawns on the king side, which I can't really avoid. But yeah, it's nice being up a queen because I'm very happy to trade. And that's one of the things to keep in mind when you're up material. Generally, trades will benefit you because um, then you're just simplifying further, giving the opponent less chances to come back. And even though my king is more open, uh, yeah, black's not getting any attack, especially after I take the bishop as well. Okay, the rook wants to take the pawn. Let's be very safe and defend. Playing a game like this definitely gives me a lot of nostalgia. Like reminds me... When I was first learning chess at uh, the age of seven, I'm sure I had a lot of games like this from the lock side where I'd blunder early. And um, part of progressing as a chess player is just learning from your mistakes, learning from other people's mistakes. I hope people watching this game can learn from some of my opponent's mistakes and, and learn kind of the, the proper principles to approach uh, the early stage of the game. A g5 attacking the knight. So I'm keep I'm gonna keep taking free stuff as it comes. Uh showing no mercy here. And we're getting very close to some potential checkmating ideas. I'm gonna grab the pawn on b7. Even though I'm abandoning my h pawn, um the king on e8 is way more of a target than my king on g1. Um, and I have a few checks. I have queen c8, which would uh, win the rook if I want. But I'm more interested in checkmating. So let's start with queen c8. This forces king e7. And rather than taking the rook, I'm just going to bring more attackers to uh, try and harass the black king. And we're entering a position which we can basically call a mating net, where I have a lot of pieces swarming around. The king is already maybe getting a little bit short on squares. And generally, when you're trying to checkmate the king, it's helpful to bring in as many pieces as possible. It's also helpful to keep checking, so black won't have time to use any of the other pieces to help out. So bishop f4, um, also developing with tempo, gaining time. Black has to move the king. And um, yeah, this is white to move, checkmate in one. Feel free to pause the video if you want to find it, but the move is queen c7. And that concludes game two of the speed run. So I gained 21 points from that game. And I think as I win more games, the rating gains will slow down a little bit. Um, but that was another, um, another pretty straightforward game. I had this decision early on. I think if I was playing like a grandmaster opponent, I would have played bishop b5 is like the more um, testing move, theoretically. But knight f3, I, I'm, I was really just trying to stick with the idea of, of trying to castle as quickly as possible, getting the king safe. And we saw that when my opponent left the queen and king vulnerably placed, then bad things happen. So I don't think there's much more to discuss in this game. But I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, we have a, a two-game episode for the first video of the speedrun. I'm realizing I still haven't added a profile picture. Maybe for the next video, I'll add a profile picture. There are a lot of suggestions in the comments of my previous video what profile picture I should have. Although I kind of liked, there was one idea of putting a picture of like a young version of me. Like maybe I'll I'll scour through some family albums and find a picture from when I was four years old. And then when I get to 500, maybe I'll update the picture to five-year-old me and so on. So um, yeah, let me know if you have questions, comments, feedback, happy to hear them. And also let me know uh, how many games you wanna see in these videos. If 
two games is too little. If you just want to see one game per episode, um, happy to adjust. Maybe I'll, I'll mix it up as we continue the series. Uh, but for now, I'm ending it. Good luck in your own games, and I'll see you guys soon.